What up, everyone? So, I mentioned a while ago that I split up my weekly roundup, and I'm going to do individual collectibles slash toy reviews, split them up into shorter videos, and do one at a time. Something I've been meaning to do, but I've been trying to get through boxes, and I realized I should just be sprinkling them in between. Do like one box and one review of something else, just like I did yesterday. So, I'm going to try to do that more and more, and just kind of pepper them in there, because they get all piled up after a while, and I have a huge stack of stuff that I want to review. So, what we've got today is a series from a long time ago that I just came across from Spawn, and these are called Kubricks. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Kubricks or Kubricks. I'm not totally sure how to pronounce it. And this is a company... Get that focus. This is a company, uh, much like Legos, they have a lot of series that they do where you build your own. I've showed them off before in a previous weekly roundup. Little Legos, and they're much like the Lego stuff. These aren't. This is just a simplistic style of the Spawn figure. Now, um, this is kind of weird because McFarlane has his own toy distribution company, so it's kind of weird that he would go to Kubrick or Kubricks um, to build his toy line. It seems kind of odd when he had his own toy line. Um, but these are somewhat old. I think they're from like 2006. And I can't remember. And the Spawn toys stopped being made right around that time too. So that may have been part of the reason for it. So I'll show off the ones I have. I don't have the complete series, but I have most of it. Um, each figure came in two alternate paint jobs. So first is Spawn. There's the classic. Oh my gosh, fucking focus. There we go. There's the classic. And there's the traditional red, white, and blue Spawn. And then we got Clown in his classic form. And then his one with the original toy where he used to be able to switch out the head, his transformation into Violator. So there's that. And then on to Violator. Got the classic version here. Da -da -da. And then the gold version. There's also a red version of this one. There's some, there's some of them have a third alternate paint job. Not all of them, but some of them do. And then we got Tremor here, classic color. And then his green version, which is an alternate paint job for the toy series. Then, the ones I don't have. So we have Overt Kill. He came with an alternate paint job. This is the alternate paint job, actually. His traditional one was just like a light blue, and this is more of the teal color. And then Redeemer. This is the traditional color, and he also came in a white version of his suit, which was an alternate toy color as well. And there were actually two more versions of Spawn. One of them... This one, they got the gold version. And then there's one more, which is really hard to find, which is the hamburger head version of Spawn in this toy. There we go. So it was the hamburger head version of it, which is very hard to come by. So there's three more that I need. So if anyone sees them anywhere, let me know. But uh, like I was doing before, I break this down and I give the, the, the toys of the figures three separate ratings and then give it an overall score. Uh, so that's what I've been doing to try and kind of give them a rating system. It's a little bit different from the boxes. I don't consider take value into consideration for this. I'll talk about the value, but that's not considered in, in the score. And I didn't mention it last time. And it's because the, the box values are very set in stone. You have to pay a certain amount, and that's what you get in the box. These things, like collectibles and things like that, it's so up for interpretation. Things like this that have been off the market for 10 years or something like that, it just is how much you can find them for. You gotta search around eBay. Sometimes you get lucky and find one for like 10 or 15. Sometimes there's one that's like 125, so it just depends. And the same with like blind box collectibles. If you get a rare one, it's more expensive. A common one's less expensive. You can't value it at the box, so. The, I'll talk about values, but it's just it can't be in the final pro, uh, the final score because it just depends on where you get it from. It's all over the place. Um, so the three ratings I do are design, paint job, and sculpt. Design is just the overall figure, how it looks, how I like it. Uh, the paint job is obviously the paint job, how well they do that. And the sculpt is the execution of the design. How well it's sculpted, do they do good and sharp pointy things? Are they, is it in proportion, does it look like the original design of the figure? And design flaws and things like that. So we'll get into it. Um, we'll, I'll use this original spawn figure as my reference. So we'll talk about the design. I, I like the design. So this is not something that I would have personally picked out due to the design. Because like I said, McFarlane Toys is was the best, man. I can't believe they stopped making toys. It was my favorite. McFarlane's always been my favorite artist. And McFarlane was the first company to do 
high-end toys where they were like sculptures almost. They started out as just action figures, but they evolved to towards the end. It was just like sculptures. You couldn't really play with them much. They weren't opposable very often. They were just like sculptures. And they were the first people to do that. And then along came like Sideshow and things like that and really blew the market up. But they were the first ones to not do crappy looking, basic cartoon looking toys. So it's kind of weird again that they went through someone else. So to see them so simplistic is really cool because you never see Spawn stuff. It's always, his art style is very complicated. There's a lot of hash marks and cross hatching and shading. If you look at any of his artwork, it's, it's, I wouldn't say a mess because it looks good, but it's very chaotic. It's very busy, it would be the word I would use. It's very busy, a lot going on. The same with the action figures. There's a lot of texture, there's a lot of bumps to them, there's all kinds of shit going on, so it's very detailed. So to see them in this simplistic form is cool, but there's a juxtaposition there. So they wanted to oversimplify these toys, just like they did with the Adventures of Spawn series, which I showed off before, but they, you gotta be careful not to go too simplistic because then it looks kind of lazy. And they're kind of on the line there. It's hard to see. I'll pick a better one. So if you look at Redeemer's hand in there, if the camera will focus. So one of his hands... Is it focusing? Come on. So one of his hands is his classic little saber. The other one is just a little, like, Lego-looking hand. And that's how it is for Spawn 2. There's some of the figures like uh, Violator and Redeemer, because they have special hands. They actually sculpt them out. But anyone that has normal hands got those just normal, like... Lego cup hands. So I, I'm not a fan of that. Um, uh, Kid Robot does the same thing. They all just have those cup hands, and I don't like that. I think that's too lazy. I know they're trying to do like commonality to make it all look like figures of a series, but I hate when they do that. It's so many companies do that, and it's just laziness to do these cup hands, and it looks stupid, to be quite honest. But other than that, I think it's really cool. They even included like the little weapon in there from his original toy line, his little classic, um, just like the piece of wood with the nail in it I guess is what it is so that's really cool and they even got the cape that like moves out like the original figure and the heads they kept pretty simple they just did a little circular head except again for the special ones that don't have circle heads like violator and clown and stuff like that so overall I think it's really cool and I like that they put it in this packaging I like that they didn't do blind boxes weren't a thing back then by the way I like that they didn't do blind boxes where you took them out I like that they're just like this you know exactly what you're getting they're carded they're ready for display like this you can just set them up or you can put them on the wall I really like that they've made it look like just a smaller version of the action figure but again design wise they could have put a lot more detail in it and normally I wouldn't care too much but since it's McFarlane and that's what they're known for I'm a little more critical than I usually am that they could have put just some more texture and things like that and things like that into the design maybe like in the body if you look here Again, it looks too much like Lego. It just looks like... The camera's having such a hard time focusing. It looks like just the a square body, so it looks just like a Lego figure. And too many companies do that. Lego's already done that, and I hate Legos. They look stupid. They all look the same. I don't like it. And this one did the same thing where it was just a square body. They should have, could have just made a, a smaller version and done... At least put, like, muscles on there. Like, they did, McFarlane did a three-inch figure. They did actually do blind boxes, but they, they told you what you got because they marked it off. But they did a three-inch version of their figures. They were amazing. I loved them so much. I have a bunch of them. And it was just a small version, just re-sculpted. I feel like they could have put more into this. Now, this is a Japanese company, so I'm guessing this was for overseas. But I, I don't think it sold too well because of some of the things I've mentioned. I feel like they could have put more into it. So design-wise, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Because I think it's cool overall. When you look at it from afar, it just looks like the action figure but smaller. So it's really cool overall. But when you get up in there, it's this there are a lot of things in there where it's like, yeah, you could have designed it a little better. There could have been more detail. But that's just being nitpicky. Next, the paint job. And as far as the paint job goes, it's pretty good. Um, it's not quite paint, though. If you look close, a lot of it is more of the sticker style where they just have a design and they have a little sticker and they put it on there. So it's not actually painted on or it's painted on by stencil. So the lines are clean and everything, but it's not that complicated. So I'm not going to give it a high score because it's an oversimplistic paint job. Like if they, like the gold version, he's just one color. Like it, it's painted, but I'm not going to give that a high score because it's, it's just the one color. It's easy to do. So for paint jobs in general, it's also based on how complicated the paint job is. If it's really simplistic, you'd expect them to stay in the lines. But if it's complicated, 
complicated, it gets trickier. So it's a very, they do a good job and they paint them very well, but it's a very simplistic paint job. So on that as well, it's going to get a 6 out of 10. It looks good and I appreciate that, but they could have done a little more design-wise on the paint job. And lastly, the sculpt, and that's just the execution of um, the design and everything like that. And it's, it's decent. They did a good job. And it's the same thing as before. They just could have put more into it. They could have put more design into it. They should have sculpted the body a little different. Um, this looks like it was put together much like the Lego figures are. And that's just not that hard to do. And I get the point. It's The point was to be oversimplistic, so I get that. I just feel like they pushed it too far. It was too oversimplistic. So sculpt-wise, I'm only going to give it a 5 out of 10. So that brings the overall score uh, to a 5.6. Now, um, here's the thing about it. The reason I bought these is because I'm just a huge Spawn fan, and there just isn't any Spawn stuff anymore, with the exception of one figure that just came out, which I'll do a review of. Um, there's just hasn't been any Spawn stuff. Spawn is in the Dark Ages right now. It hasn't resurged yet. We're kind of waiting on if he ever makes that movie, who knows if he will, for it to come back into pop culture. Right now, it's dead and gone. There are no figures. There's no anything like that. The comics are still there, but they're not that popular. There's just not that much stuff out there. So I'm kind of forced to go back and collect old things. So I like it because it reminds me of the original figures and I like the way they're displayed. So I bought it for more nostalgic purposes. But if you're looking for like well-designed toys, this probably wouldn't be the best line. So that's why it only gets a 5.6 because other McFarlane stuff is immaculate. They do so good on the sculpt and the paint job and the design. All of it is just beautiful. But this one, it's it's. I see what they were going for, but didn't quite hit the mark there. So if you're a huge Spawn fan and you're looking for them, you can find some of these for as cheap as like 10 or 15 bucks, depending on which one. But one's like the hamburger head version of it. I, I The only one I've seen is like 125 bucks, which is crazy, I'm not paying that. So yeah, if any of you guys see any cheaper than that, let me know. But yeah, if you wanna pick a couple of these up, like the traditional Spawn, if you were a fan of the original figures, I say go for it. But don't expect like immaculate conception on these toys or anything like that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. And most of all, let me know if you guys wanna see anything. Old toys, new toys, collectibles, artwork, statues, sculptures, whatever. I have them all and I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna show off some artwork as well. If there's anything you'd like to see or hear an opinion of, or see a rating of, hear a review of, just let me know. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. And I'm more than happy to find things and then post a little review of them. So that's what this little subject is going to be mostly about, doing reviews of individual things. So let me know what you guys would like to see. Let me know what you guys think of these figures. Are there any Spawn fans out there? Let's hear it. So anyway, uh, 5.6 on the overall of the Spawn Kubrick series. Uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Love you all. Peace.